Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I am reviewing the highly anticipated Children of Blood and Bone by Tony Adeyemi. And yeah, this is what the book looks like. Um, the first portion I will go into a review with no spoilers. Once I get to the latter of the video, there will be spoilers, but I will give you a heads up. So that way, if you haven't had a chance to read it, you can exit out and come back when you're done. Okay, so um, to start off, the book is beautiful. Um, the way it looks is just aesthetically beautiful. Um, the back of the book has a powerful quote on here where it says, they killed my mother, they took our magic, they tried to bury us, now we rise. And that's really what this book is about. This is a young adult book. Um, the author, she's only 24 years old and she signed a seven figure deal. Um, this is one part of a three part trilogy that should be released. Um, there's already a movie deal on the line for this to be turned into a movie. And I completely understand why. Um, this book is absolutely amazing. It is 500 plus pages um, and I finished it in two and a half days. So that lets you know and I work a full time job. So I mean, I was doing this at night type of thing. So that lets you know how amazing this book is. Um, the, the premise of this book, it is, like I said, a young adult book, but, book, but it is fantasy. Um, the author, she's been known to describe it. Um, she described it on Good Morning America as basically Black Panther, but with magic. And it's that, and it's so much more. It's like children saving the world. It's African history. Um, it's like, it's the cultural references are amazing. Um, a lot of the book is based off of um, Nigerian culture, so you'll see or hear Nigerian clothing mentioned. A lot of the names are based off of Nigerian culture. A lot of the gods um, are based on West African um, religious si systems and stuff of that nature. So, you know, she definitely, she definitely nailed a lot of aspects of this, even though it's a fantasy place and a um, not really a real place in the sense because it, you know it's fiction it's amazing it's about a young girl who basically is tasked with bringing magic back um, yeah it's about so much more than that there's um, this group of people called well they're not yet Maji for lack of a better term they're basically a, a group that is oppressed beaten, treated poorly, and has had their magic taken away from them. And it is amazing. Like the author, which she goes into at the end of the book when you read um, in the author's note that this was written during a time where she herself was full of a lot of feelings and a lot of rage with just current things that are going on in this life. She actually gives homage and honors um, the young kids whose lives were stolen when they were murdered at the hands of cops, at the hands of those in authority. Um, she gives homage to those who witness those atro atrocities. Um, so yeah, she did a great job of sending a message but also taking us on a ride and a journey. And it was amazing, like from start to So the four main characters are a young girl named Zaylee, who you can describe her as passionate, full of empathy, but also mainly because she has dealt with so much in her life. Um, she's very rash. She makes some poor decisions, but she also, she's just a flawed, perfectly flawed character where you, she's just so relatable and you just immediately fall in love with her and you're rooting for her. Um, and she is what they call a diviner, a diviner, um, correct me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, um, who basically, um, if mag magic wasn't taken away from her, she would eventually become a Maji. Um, but even though she doesn't have magic, it's easy to tell that she is a diviner because diviners are born with snow white hair, um, like on the cover of this book. So that is a very tale sign. They're very dark skinned with snow white hair um so she also has an older brother who is not a diviner he is her older brother zane he is kind of like was thrown into a father figure kind of early he's like a protector he's more so on the lines where he's his anger is more subdued in the sense of he feels like if we just play by the rules things will work out so he kind of channels his anger more towards his sister like can you just 
act right so we don't have to go through all this. Not really understanding or realizing that um, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. <laughs> Hate doesn't work like that. Um, the next character we run into is Amari. She is a girl of privilege. She's a princess. Um, she has basically been sheltered her entire life, but she also has a fighter in her. She has a fighting spirit within her um, that, you know, progresses. But she also, you know, her world vision has been skewed uh, basically by her privilege. And then we have Anon, who is prototype for privilege. He's her older brother and he is the prince and you know he is trying to follow in his father's footsteps so the story is actually told from the perspective of three of those main characters um but it's really good because you get uh insight from how different people view the world and different people think and the way they problem solve the way they empathize the way they kind of are able to understand you know um basically injustice oppression and privilege <laughs> so i think that was very very um really good of the author to make sure that she didn't tell this from one point of view um another thing that i loved is i feel like you if you live in this world today you will this book will you'll relate to this book in some way i'm going to read you a little excerpt um, just one page that kind of gives you a good idea of it was kind of a page that touched me the most not exactly the most but I'll explain why um, and this is from Zelly the main character a conversation she's having with Inan you don't need magic to fix things leave me alone if you could just see where I'm coming from go you don't have to be afraid I'm always afraid I don't know what shocks me more the power in my voice or the words themselves. Afraid. I am always afraid. It's a truth I locked away years ago, a fact I fought hard to overcome because when it hits, I'm paralyzed. I can't breathe, I can't talk. All at once, I'm crumpled to the ground, clasping my palm over my mouth to stifle the sobs. It doesn't matter how strong I get, how much power my magic wields, they will always hate me in this world. I will always be afraid. That struck me because um, if you are a minority group or a group that has been oppressed in some way, shape or form, you can relate to that because there's a period where you kind of don't want to acknowledge that you are, you know, you're always afraid and you know, you're always on guard. You know, when you walk, you're always thinking, you're always aware of your surroundings. You're always wondering, you know, you never really have a chance to but to acknowledge that, when you acknowledge that, that can be somewhat depressing. And it's also hard when she says that, you know, no matter how much magic I wield in this world, they will always hate me. Like that is one of the hardest things to accept that there's nothing that you can do specifically to make someone not hate you. Like hate isn't logical. Hate you know people are gonna hate if people are gonna hate you just because of the way you were born clearly that's not logical like you know there's not anything that you can do to change who you are and you really can't necessarily change a person's hate um, hopefully they themselves will be able to change that hate on their own but to realize you were completely powerless in that situation it's deflating um, but it was candid and it was raw and I felt the author did such a great job of expressing that inner turmoil that a lot of people face you know this is a fantasy book you know sci-fi like book so you know you don't get you're not going to get warped into this where it's a depressing book at all or anything like that but you will feel a lot of things and you will get thrown into this fantasy world and draw parallels to real everyday life um yeah so at this point in the book i am going to stop it here i say to this point in the book at this point in the video i'm going to go ahead and pause it here and warn you guys if you haven't read this book this next section of me discussing the book will contain spoilers so i'm giving you all the time in the world to get out <laughs>
Okay, so if you're here, you've read the book, so there's no spoilers given. So let me just talk first by saying that I love Zaylee. Zaylee was by far my favorite character in this. Amari, originally she was kind of like, oh my god, you're annoying. Um, but through time, I kind of softened up to her. I was kind of like Zaylee throughout the process, like giving her a break, trying to, but um, I think she exemplifies what an ally is a lot of times sometimes allies don't allies don't really understand but she's the person who had a pure heart and a good heart where once she did start understanding regardless of how she ended up getting there she did try to use her privilege um, to help advance the lives of the oppressed so I thought that was really really cool um, it was so frustrating for me though because it was like this is how I feel in real life. Like, I'm like, wow, so it took someone you know getting killed for this to be like, all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, the way this isn't right. And even then, I don't think she really recognized that um, Finta or whatever, her um, servant, you know, that she calls her friend, I don't think she really grasped that she was there against her will. Like, you know, I don't know if she completely got that till this moment, but. Oh, sorry but nonetheless I mean she got there um, I think that's very much true of just how the world works sometimes it takes this tragic situation for people to finally be like you know what now this is too much I got to do something about it so you know you can't fault people for whenever they do finally see the light but you can only commend them for the actions that they take to try to help the situation um, I also think that a lot of times it's about your willingness to try to see things sometimes you know she was frustrated with Zelly like she doesn't know when Zelly is gonna snap or she doesn't know this but you know she was there trying to understand like having the conversation with Zelly like what why did it like you know she I felt had her heart in the right place for that she won me over and plus seeing her strength build throughout the book I'm excited to see where the next books take her character um Zane. Zane, he he was actually my third favorite character as well as my second to last least favorite character simply because Zane was frustrating. There's a lot of Zanes in the world too, but his was like he really I still feel like he thinks that if Amari I'm I'm sorry, if Zelly just plays by the rules, things can kind of be okay. And it's like, no, that's not how this works. Like, I felt like he would take his anger out on her so much. And some of the things that he said about her, it was hurtful. Like, um, I get he didn't like the Inan Zelly romance. I didn't care for it either. Um, but when he was like, you know, he only wants you for what's between your legs, it was just hurtful. And I was like, no, that's actually not why. You know, granted, I don't trust Inan with a grain of salt, but um, that's not why. You don't make your sister seem like some pathetic whatever case um now to on to Enon Enon I might have actually liked him more than Zane because at least with Enon we got to hear his perspective and as frustrating as he is when someone hates themselves or they're not sure of themselves they can't be sure of anything else so the fact that he flip-flopped doesn't surprise me I was so confused as to how Zaylee could fall for this dude so fast it didn't make any sense and I'm glad at least the other characters in the book didn't think it made sense either. Um, granted I did enjoy their dreamscape scene just because the nerd in me was like wow that's really creative. <laughs> like I don't know I was like oh I don't, like I don't know it'd be cool to be in a dreamscape. No? I was the only one thinking that? Okay. Um, <laughs> but like he he was he was like zelly like Amari, there's a point where Amari's like, look, my brother, you know, I want to believe that he wants to do right, but I'm telling you, you can't really be too sure. Like, if your own sister says you think he has a good heart and you're rooting for him, but you don't really know, I would trust the sister. Like, why are you believing homeboy on blind faith? Um, yeah, it was just, it was so frustrating. And I felt so bad because if he, if she didn't let you know, I get in her head. All those diviners would have turned into Maji at the camp with Zoo and stuff. Um, Ho Zoo's death, I don't want to think about it. That was so heartbreaking. 
my heart broke. Uh, I can't talk about it. But um, yeah, I just like when you let you get sidetracked from your mission, you already knew your vision. They already told you, like they already told you it was you, your brother, and Amari in this vision. Ain't nobody mentioned nobody about no Enon. So you should have known Homeboy wasn't going to be riding with you to the end. But that's besides the point. Um, yeah, so I'm excited for the trilogy. I'm excited. Um, it's amazing because, you know, this author, she signed a seven-figure deal. She, it's This is one part of a three-part series. We're guaranteed two other books that I'm sure will be fire there's already a movie deal, a movie in the works based off of this book. Like, I can't wait for this empire. Like, I hope that a fantasy world is built, that this is bigger than Hogwarts. I, that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> um, yeah, like, I don't know. This was just, this is amazing. Um, yeah, it was amazing. So yeah, that was Children of blood and bones please leave in the comments below if you love this book or what were your thoughts about the book i love 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 to discuss this um and see me in my next book review uh i have a, quite a bit of book reviews coming up so check me out every week we're gonna need more wine hunger akata witch series so much on the way anyways love live laugh and god bless always t sis <laughs>